Hi, everyone. We are going to learn about an important document for our country. It is the Constitution of the United States. So what is the Constitution? It's one of the most important documents in our country. It is the highest law of the land. What that means is there is nothing that will beat the Constitution. Okay, so all of our local governments, like um, the towns or like Mason, the city, um, and the states, nothing will beat the Constitution because it is the highest law of the land. And even the cities and the states look at the Constitution to help them make their um, their rules for their city or state. So the Constitution was written in 1787, just 11 years after the Declaration of Independence. And um, it's a big document. It has tons of words. It has tons of rules, um, tons of different parts. But what we're going to learn about is, one, what is the purpose of it? Um, how does it function? And what are the different parts? So you're not going to need to memorize like any of those kind of things. Um, there might be one or two things I'm going to ask you to really keep in the back of your brain. So let's start by watching this video that explains the Constitution a little bit better. The Constitution of the United States of America by the RBE Library. The Constitution is a document written by a group of men known as the Framers in 1787. Yes, it is over 200 years old. From May to September of 1787, the Framers met in Philadelphia at Independence Hall and discussed what should be in the Constitution. The United States was a brand new country at the time and had a government that many felt was not as good as it could be. So in this video, it talks about how our document, this document is two, over 200 year, um, years old. That's pretty impressive. Um, but also you have to think about our country is actually not that old either compared to maybe some European countries. And I really want you to notice the first part of this document. It starts with we, the people. I don't know if you can um, see that cursive kind of writing. It says we the people. We're actually going to really focus on that, that whole like um, part right here. Okay. They were meeting to come up with a new way of running the country. Some of the people at this meeting, called the Constitutional Convention, are famous to us today, including James Madison, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington, our first president. The men came from all over the country, which at the time was made up of only 13 states. The different states had different ideas of what the new government should do, and they had many debates and discussions to come up with a plan that everyone could agree with. It is said that the Constitution was born in compromise, because only by compromising could all the disagreements be resolved. Benjamin Franklin said that he was not sure if the plan was perfect, but that it was probably as perfect as it could be. After the Constitutional Convention ended, the Constitution had to be approved by the 13 states. The Constitution actually said that only nine states had to agree to the Constitution, but everyone wanted all the states to agree. Two states, North Carolina and Rhode Island, took a long time to decide to agree to the Constitution, but in the end, they did. When the Constitution was accepted by these first nine states, we say that it was ratified. Okay, I want you to notice that vocabulary word, ratify. Ratify means to approve of. One of the biggest reasons a lot of people opposed the original Constitution was because it lacked a Bill of Rights. A Bill of Rights is a list of rights that belong to the people that the government is not allowed to break. Some of these rights may sound familiar, the right to free speech, the right to practice your own religion, and the right to be silent if the police accuse you of a crime. The original Constitution had no Bill of Rights. Many of the framers did not think it was necessary, but to get the Constitution to pass in some of the states, promises were made to add a Bill of Rights once the new government was up and running. 
can I just say that is ingenious that they would not sign the constitution until a bill of rights was established. I love that idea because um, those, those rights and which we'll learn about later are rights that the government cannot take away from us. It's guaranteed to us. Um, so I love that they held out until the bill of rights was established. When the constitution was written, the framers knew their creation was not perfect. They knew that other people would have good ideas for the Constitution and that future generations would want to make changes. They wanted to make it possible to change the Constitution without needing to resort to revolution. They wanted to be sure that it wasn't too hard to make changes, but they also wanted to be sure that it wasn't too easy. The framers added an amendment process. An amendment to the Constitution is a change that can add to the Constitution or change an older part of it. After the this is also so ingenious of the founding fathers and the framers of the constitution back in the 1700s, they were predicting future changes. Awesome. They, they were visionaries. They were thinking about in the future. Well, things aren't always going to be, you know, this way. We want to make it so that it's easier for, not too easy, but easier for um, citizens to come about and make some changes, like they said, without starting a revolution, kind of like what they did with King George. When the new government started to meet, Congress proposed the Bill of Rights, and in 1791, the, the changes were accepted by enough of the states that they were added to the Constitution. And these 10 changes are called the Bill of Rights. The Constitution is the highest law in the United States. All other laws come from the Constitution in some way. The Constitution also provides the framework for the government of the United States. It created things like the presidency, the Congress, and the Supreme Court. Each state has its own Constitution that is the highest law for the state, but even then, the United States Constitution is higher. All right. So from that, um, we're going to talk about a couple of things. There are two major functions of the Constitution. Function one is it sets up and organizes the government. So how our government currently runs is because of this Constitution. So here's what it did. It divided our country's government and organize it into three branches, which I think you learned in fourth grade. So let's review. The three branches of government are the legislative branch, which makes all of our laws. They have the Congress, uh, they have Congress and they have the Senate, right? So um, we have 50 senators and the legislature, the Congress is made up of different amounts of, of um uh, congressmen and women, depending on population. So that's the legislative branch. Then we have the executive branch. They enforce the laws. And that's made up of the president and all the cabinet members, like the Department of Education, the Department of Transportation, Department of Housing, and all of that. Okay, so that's the president and the and um, his cabinet. And then finally, we have the third branch, the judicial branch. And at the top, we have the Supreme Court, which is the highest um, court in the land. So um, if you don't make your case down here in Mason, then you go up to Ohio's courts. And then the final court is the Supreme Court, and they have the final say. You can't go higher than that. So that's the first function. It sets up and organizes the government. Genius, right? Like Because, of course, you got to have organization. You know, I love good organization. Function two is it explains the basic rights that citizens have called the Bill of Rights. So important. Organize the government, give us our rights. Okay. Um, you may watch this on your own. This is an interview with former President Barack Obama talking about the uh, importance of the Constitution. And then if you're a musical person, you might enjoy We the People song. All right, let's talk about the preamble to the Constitution. So the definition of preamble is introduction, and you learn that in learning the Declaration because there is a preamble there too. So the word preamble means the introduction of the Constitution, and in this introduction, 
it explains the reason and the purpose. Okay, kind of like when you're doing appeal paragraph, we always start off with our topic sentence and it tells us what we're writing about. It's almost like a blueprint thesis. It's exactly like that. So the purpose of the preamble is to declare the beliefs, okay? Um, it declares principles, which means our values. Now, this is not principle like Mr. Messer, okay? It's principles, like what we believe in, our values. And of course, the goals of the Constitution. It's the basic framework for the system of government in America. Like I said, it's like, you know, in your house, you have the foundation, that concrete foundation that you walk on every day. And then the walls, the Constitution is just like that. It's that basic framework that we build our house on. The preamble to the Constitution is full of well-considered words that set the scene to the most important document of the United States, okay? If you have time, you are welcome to enjoy this preamble to the Constitution. It's a Schoolhouse Rock um, song. Um, Schoolhouse Rock is super old school, but it's kind of fun, so check it out. So why does the preamble of the Constitution start with these three important words, we, the, people. What does that show if the first three words in the most important document in your country starts with we, the people? I want you to pause my video, take a second to write that idea down, or just say it out loud and talk it through. Yes, I really mean do it. Don't just pretend to do it. So go ahead and pause. Okay, if you are unpausing, you're ready for to discuss why does the preamble start with we the people? I hope you said something about that the framers who started the Constitution wanted to start with that the Constitution is about the people. It's not about other things and laws and whatnot. It's really about the people because that's what our country's all about. We the people. All right. Amendments to the Constitution. So let's talk about what an amendment is. Amendment, or the word amend, means to change. When the Constitution was written, the framers knew that it wasn't perfect, kind of like a draft. If you think about in writing, we do lots of drafts. You know your first is never your best. It just never is. I don't care for J.K. Rowling. It just isn't. They knew that other people would later have good ideas for the Constitution, and that's so smart and ingenious of them. And they wanted to be sure that it wasn't too hard to make those changes. They also wanted to be sure that it wasn't so simple that anyone could just like say, you know what, I'm going to revise the Constitution today. It just can't work like that. All right. It's such an important document. It can't be too easy to change the laws. So the framers, they added something called an amendment process. So an amendment to the Constitution is a change that can add to the Constitution or it could revise an older part of it. So currently there are 27 amendments to the Constitution. That means there's 27 changes that have happened. Um, guys, this video you're going to have to watch. It's hilarious. Um, if you know the song, this is such an old song now, but it's called Gungam Style. Um, this one is called Constitution Style. I can't play it for you right now. Otherwise, my video will be so long, but I'd love for you to go check it out. It'll have you dancing. And I promise you like the whole day, that's what you'll be singing. Okay. I'm going to have to play a little bit of it now that it's in my head. We're going to have to to watch a little bit and you can watch the rest on your own, of course. I might dance, so just fair warning. Constitution style. Constitution style. Amendment 1 states our three freedoms and two rights. Speech plus and religion right to assemble and petition. The second amendment Men. gives the right to bear arms. Not the right to arm bears. <laughs> and now amendment 3. It 
grievance soldiers from being quartered in our private homes. Amendment 4 protects us from searches and seizures without a warrant because that is so unlawful, yeah. So unlawful, <laughs> yeah. Amendment 5 covers trial and punishment. It's hey, it compensates. Hey, Amendment 6 gives us the right to a speedy trial. Hey, a speedy trial. Hey, does look like it when the legal system's low, 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 Dance, you know you want to. Constitution style. Mr. Washington. Constitution style. Mr. Washington. Amendment 7 gives us the right to trial by jury. And Amendment 8 protects us from cruel and unusual punishments. Amendment 9 covers nearly everything else. Amendment 10 gives the state some power. Amendment 11. Judicial limits. Okay, that's all we got. You have to go back and watch that. I know you're dancing right now, or you were. Okay, so the Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. And um, the, the idea behind the Bill of Rights was to make sure that certain freedoms and rights were given to the citizens of America. It does put limits on what the government can do and control. And because of these Bill of Rights and these important rights, our country is so special because it allows us these freedoms. So here's what's protected. Our freedom of religion, speech, assembly, the right to bear arms, not the right to arm bears, unreasonable search and seizure of our homes. Like no one can just come in and search your house unless they have like a warrant, which is a paper that they have to have. The right to a speedy trial, meaning you can't like have your trial um, in, a, in, a, in a court last for like four years or it doesn't happen for years and years. So these are some important freedoms that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights gives us. Um, if you have a second to watch the Bill of Rights video Disney version, check it out. All right, we're going to stop right there. But that gives you a quick overview of the Constitution. So see if you can tell me what are the two main functions of the Constitution?